Amen. 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 We sing a song like that. And behold, I come quickly. Amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, as I and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm going to draw men unto me. Amen. Amen. We know that's talking about the cru by this crucifixion, but we lift him up in praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah to God. We're going to start our song service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Page 69. Amen. Those of you that have a Psalm book page 69. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. So glad. So glad. Amen. Praise the Lord. We got reinforcements. <laughs> Saints got to reinforce each other. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes you're in a battle. You need somebody to say, hey, I'm going to throw rocks with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Thanks. If somebody said praise God, so praise. so I, I praise God too. Amen. We praise God too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. All right, page number 69. In days like this, this is where we need to be. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs>
I say so often, the devil is saying, don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't go nowhere. That's going to get you off and under the blood. Hallelujah to God. Stay in God's grace. Stay under God's faith. Don't play with grace. Stay under Hallelujah. grace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, page 79. Because of the blood, amen. Hallelujah. I can sing glory to his name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Down at the cross. Yes.
And because of what he done, what we could not do, yeah. amen, we can sing this song. Yeah. Everybody oh, yeah. will be happy over there. Oh, yeah. But there's only one way you can get over there. You got to repent. Yes. Amen. Yes. Not join church. Not put your name on the road. You got to repent yes. and be baptized. Yes. Amen. By water immersion yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. The name that washes away sin. Yes. Amen. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you can go over there. Hallelujah yes. to God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Yes. At this time, we're going to stand Amen. for prayer. We're going to be led in prayer by Minister Gary Leaders in a short prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Ago, when the pastor been shot, it wasn't fair. Hello. And and Father, I pray for the for the people in the, the nursing home, yes, and prison bars, and, and and jail cells, yes, and Lord. hospitals, yes, yes. yes Lord, that they will get out. Hello. Oh Jesus, Jesus! Jesus. Even the people that for life, have mercy, Lord. Oh, uh, uh, you are with them. May they, God, change their minds. Change their minds, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. yes. because. Jesus Christ, you know how to get them out. Yes, Lord. Because yes, Lord. you thank you for chasing us for when we were wrong, but changing help, us, yes, help Lord. Help us yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To, to be right more and much as we can. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. This we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Yes, Amen. Chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Thematic text, St. Paul Church. Joshua, chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Reads as follows. Now therefore fear the Lord. Who are we going to fear? The Lord. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell all together. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, obeying of his word. Amen, amen. Now we're going to ask the praise group here, huh? They can stay there and do it right there. All right. Amen. amen. But we won't. Amen. They used to say years ago, when they didn't want to say, we're going to rock Daniel. 
Amen. We're going to rock the church. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to want amen. So Holy Ghost praise. Amen. Holy Ghost praise. All right. Here we go. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Come on in this house and serve the Lord, serve the Lord. Why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Why? Lord, serve the Lord. This is where you get your healing. Come on in this house. This is where you get your healing. Come on in this house. This is where you get your healing. Come on in this house. Come on in this house and serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. This is where you get your love. Come on in this house. This is where you get your love. Come on in this house. This is where you get your love. Come on in this house. Come on in this house and serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. This is where you get your joy. Come on in this house. This is where you get your joy. Come on in this house. This is where you get your joy. Come on in this house. Come on in this house and serve the Lord, serve the Lord. This is where you get your peace. Come on in this house. This is where you get your peace. Come on in this house. This is where you get your peace. Come on in this house. Come on in this house and serve the Lord, serve the Lord. This is where you get your faith. This is where you get your faith. Come on in this house. This is where you get your faith. Come on in this house. Come on in this house and serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Come on in this house. 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 There's love in this house. There's love in this house. Come on in this house. Come on in this house. Deliverance in this house. Deliverance in this house. Salvation in this house. Salvation in this house. Come on in this house. Come on in this house. House. Jesus in this 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 house. There's power in this house. There's power in this house. Come on in this house. Come on in this house. There's Jesus in this house. This house, Jesus in this house, Jesus in this house. So why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Come on in this house and serve the Lord, serve the Lord. Come on in this house. Come on in this house. Come on in this house. There's love in this house. There's joy in this house. There's faith in this house. Come on in this house. There's peace in this house. There's peace in this house. Come on in this house. Come on in this house. 
Church of our Lord Jesus Christ wrote a song long years ago. It said his name should be praised. Amen. His name should be praised. Amen. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower. Amen. His name should be praised. Hallelujah. And then someone wrote this very lovely name, this song that says, his name is wonderful. Amen. Jesus, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Truly, we thank God, amen, for this time of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. To let the Lord know we appreciate him. Amen. 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 Look, when I open my eyes, I tell the Lord, thank you. That's right. I can move. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, if you haven't been where you couldn't hardly move, mm -hmm. then you appreciate when you can move. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don't wish that on nobody, Bishop. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. But when you can move, when you couldn't once move, Hallelujah. When you couldn't get out the bed on your own, but you can get out the bed. Amen. Precious hearts, he deserves the praise. Hallelujah. And one of the greatest praise we can give God is our life. Amen. Hallelujah. When you want to praise him, oh, you want to praise him, surrender your life. Say, Lord, here I am, I give up. Amen. Everything about me. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Everything about me. Amen, amen. Everything down my path, down my timeline. Lord, I give it up. I surrender amen. everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Anything I can think of, anything, my aspirations, what I plan to do, Bishop, I give it to him. Hallelujah, because he's worthy. Truly, we thank God this afternoon. Hallelujah. I'm feeling real good right now. Y'all ever heard that song say, I feel good, good, good. I feel good down in my soul. Every time I think about Jesus, makes me feel good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we thank God, amen, for this great fellowship. Amen. Not just a friendship, but a fellowship. Amen. Amen. All the fellows on this same ship, what ship y'all in? Holiness. 
Hallelujah to God. Amen. Amen. The Bible Amen. says, do what? Follow peace. I got to get along with you if I can. Amen. And one verse says, as much as lie within you. That's right. Some folk won't let you do it. Yes, Amen. But we follow peace with all men and what? Holiness. Holiness. Mm -hmm. Which out which no, no man. man. That goes for a woman man too. No man. Mm -hmm. Will see the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we thank God. And truly, mm -hmm. I thank God for my friend and brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bishop. Amen. Walker. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Since we became friends, we've been friends. Amen. Amen. You got them folks that say they're friends. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Got these folks say they are friends, but when the rubber hits the road, mm -hmm. they get going. Mm -hmm. you know, they say when the going gets tough, they get going. Mm -hmm. But a true friend, friend. Amen. We'll pray you through. Not only that, tell you about yourself and let you tell them about themselves. Amen. True friend. I am. What does it do? Sharpen an iron. And we thank God for you all. Amen. Spirit of Truth Tabernacle. Amen. Being with us. Amen. Over here at St. Paul today. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you, I believe we're going to stir the enemy up. <laughs> amen. 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 We, 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 when you get to praising God and mean business, mm -hmm. amen, you, not only do you stir the devils up, you drive them out. Amen. Say amen, amen. somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The devil cannot be in control where the Holy Ghost is. Amen. Ooh, that was good, Pastor Williams. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost gets the movement. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, word of God goes for every devil, every evil spirit is subject. Say amen, amen. somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. What? what did he say? Casting down imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. So at this time, let's receive our dear friend, your pastor, Bishop J.W. Walker, Spirit of Truth Tabernacle. You come and say amen. 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 Amen, everybody. Amen. Can we put those hands together and give God a praise? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The psalmist said, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. And then he said, add a shout with it. But if you got victory, you should have a shout when you're praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important that the people of God praise him. Because praise creates an atmosphere for God to come in and sit on our worship. Come on, somebody. When you refuse to praise God, you're telling him he ain't welcome. But the Bible says in Psalms 22 that God inhabited the praises of his people. Amen. And where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus said, I will be in the midst of them. Praise God. How many understand the importance of having the presence of God in the midst of this house? Hallelujah. And that's why I appreciate the saints of old because they understood the importance of the presence of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Moses said in Exodus, he said, Lord, don't carry us anywhere unless your presence Hallelujah. be with us. Right. Amen. Amen. But, we'll, but we have committed the same mistake as the children of Israel in times past mm -hmm. where they thought they could go and battle the enemy yeah. even though the man of God had given them good counsel yes, and told them not to go up before their enemies for the Lord is not among you. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And that teaches me something that if the presence of God is not there, yeah. if the anointing of the Holy Ghost is not there, Jesus said we can't do nothing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it is the responsibility of the saints of God to usher in God's presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
because he should be welcome in his own house. Yeah. Jesus said, this house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Amen. And if this is a house of prayer, then God should be welcome in his own house. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many understand that? Amen. 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 He called us out of darkness. Yeah into his marvelous life that we might show forth his praise. Hallelujah. Do I got any praises in the house? Glory to God. And a praiser is not one who can just holler. A praiser is not one who can just dance across the tabernacle. But let me share this with you. A praiser is first a praiser when he's obedient to God's word. Come on, somebody. Then when you shout, then when you dance, then when you lift up holy hands, God can be honored by his sons and his daughters. You can't praise God in disobedience. Shouting and dancing and hard hitting. Screaming and 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 clapping and still won't hearken to his voice. Well, that's not a praise. Because when we praise God, it must be done out of a heart of obedience. If God will not hear the prayers of sinners unless they repent, then why would God hear the praise? Of them that have sin in their heart and they refuse to repent. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. The God of Israel is not a sloppy God, but He's a God of order. Yes. And whatever He says, He means. And He means what He said. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Are we making sense up in here? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. We would like to first give honor to God the Father Amen. and his Son, Amen. Jesus the Christ. Amen. We thank God for the sent man of this house, Amen. Bishop Williams. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. I thank God for blessing him to come into my life. Amen. And you know, there's people God bring into your life. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes you think that when you come into somebody's life, uh -huh. it's for you to bless them. Mm -hmm. But you'll find out a lot of times God brought them into your life to bless you. Yeah. 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 So you can think it's all about you. Uh -huh. Well, God brought me into my to your life to help you. Yeah, yeah. When he really brought them into your life to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I can, I'm reminded of the woman of Zarephath mm -hmm. during the time of a famine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the prophet was hungry. And she said, I'm going to bake you a cake. Uh -huh. She was going to save it for her and her son. That's right. Eat for the last time. And then she said, we're going to die. That's, why, that's, it. that's what she said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when the prophet of God showed up at her house, oh, yes. he said, bake me a cake. Yes. Now that sounds a little selfish. But God brought the man of God into her life because he wanted to bless her. Yes. God used that woman to bless the prophet. Yes. But God really sent the prophet into her life to bless her. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And after she baked him a cake, mm -hmm. being obedient to God's voice, yes. 
God supernaturally blessed that woman and her child and never let the cruise of oil run out nor the meal in the barrel. It never ran out. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. See, that's the glory of obedience. And you have to be open. You can't think that you came into my life just to be a blessing to me. But the truth is, God sent the man of God into your life to bless oh, you. Yeah. 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 Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. You can be seated. We thank God for each and every one of you Amen. that are in this house Amen. on today. We appreciate the God of Israel for giving us a day of rest. Amen. And that day is called the Sabbath. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture says the Sabbath was made for man Amen. and not man for the Sabbath. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Sabbath, the Bible called it holy. Amen. Now how is it that folks that proclaim they holiness excuse that which God has called holy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture says in Genesis chapter 2, he blessed it and he sanctified it. Yeah. We're the sanctified people yeah. because he sanctified that seventh day yeah. and he gave it a name when he didn't give all the other days of the week a name. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that seven-day Sabbath is a type and shadow of the 7,000 year Amen. that is coming. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And just as the seventh day we rest from our labors, on that 7,000 year we would have taken on our glorified bodies and entered into his rest. Amen. And we will reign and rule with Christ for a thousand years, which is that 7,000th year. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I got anybody here that believe the word of God? Amen. You know, Mother Em, that's a touchy subject today. The word of God is a touchy subject because people don't believe what is written. They dance around the scriptures. Hallelujah. They make up every excuse in the book. Praise God. But on the day of judgment, do you not know the very word that you rejected? Jesus said is the very word that going to judge you. You don't have time to make excuses. You don't have time for that. Because time is running out. And we got to get this thing right before our candle get put out. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We are still here in the land of the living because God has given us Mercy. Yes. That's why we're still here. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Because he's given us an opportunity to get it right. Thank you, yes. Yes. And the only way you can get it right, you got to take heed to what's written yes. in the scriptures. Yeah. Psalms 33 and 4 said, the word of the Lord is right. Yes. So if the word of the Lord is right, Everything else that contradicted must be wrong. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. If believing the word of God is wrong, I don't want to be right. Somebody help me praise him. Hallelujah. We live in a time where so many people say they believe the Bible. Then when you enter into its pages and you begin to 
deal with particular things that are written therein, everybody begins to fight. Everybody begins to make up an excuse. Well, what about this? What about that? Well, God didn't say this, and well, that don't mean that. That's your interpretation. And yet their time is running out. Their time is running out. And they'll end up dying in their sin, thinking they was on their way to glory land, and lift up their eyes and be in torment. God labored with you. He put somebody in your life to open up your blinded eyes so you can see what you have not seen all these years you've been living. And because of that, many will be lost. Because he gave you the, uh, the greatest opportunity you've ever had and you threw it away. You let pride cause you to throw it away right. and you rather just hope I'm right, right. you rather believe that I hope this is enough right. and that's not it no, not. see when you reject the word of God you reject in Jesus that's right. Amen. Yes. in the beginning was the word yes. Yes. and the word was with God yes. And the word was God, and the word was made flesh, and it dwelt among Amen. us. Amen. You cannot separate Jesus from the word. Amen. He is the word. Amen. And he put his word in the mouth of his prophets and apostles. Amen. And they delivered unto us his truth. Notice I said his truth. Because see, there's only one truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And we live in a day now where many people go by their truth. That's called subjective. Amen? See, subjective truth is based on feelings and opinion. Your feelings, your opinion. But objective truth is based upon facts and scripture. And most people have a subjective truth. They believe what they believe, even though it doesn't have no foundations in scripture. They rather believe something that God never said. Amen. Romans 10, 17 said, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If God didn't say it, why you believe in something that God didn't say? Praise God. We must believe what thus saith the Lord. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm preaching already. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. We got to get on that plumb line. Amen. Because unless we take heed to what is written, you're going to be lost for eternity. Amen. You can't say I'm receiving God's word and you mean than a, than a grizzly bear. Amen. You can dress right, still be mean. Right. Well, guess what? That's a person that ain't saved. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But guess what? That is still no excuse for you to adorn yourself in modest apparel. Right. Because if you get right, you got to dress right. Hallelujah. And the man of God going to teach you how to dress. Because the apostle taught the bishop of Ephesus that the women were to adorn themselves in modest apparel. Right. Come on. Right, and with your modest apparel must come meekness, right. a quiet spirit. Right. You must be loving right. and compassionate, right. tender hearted. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, all that go together. Yeah. 
And just because there's some people out there that's dressing right, but they still evil, evil. well, those people need to get saved. Yeah. You, yes. you don't get saved by your outer appearance. That's right. no. Salvation is an inside job. Yeah. Yeah. And something on the inside, work it on the outside. Yeah. In my life. So it starts on the inside. But it begins to work his way on the outside. When I got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, he took my sins away. Are you listening to me? Now God began to deal with some other things in my life, including my dress code. And your dress code ain't just for church. Because holiness is a lifestyle. Because if you only do it when you come to the house of prayer, you're still a hypocrite. Amen. If I can only open up my Bible when I come in the house of prayer, and then any other time I don't read my Bible, I don't get on my knees and pray, I'm just a hypocrite. Amen. Come on, somebody. You want to come in the house of prayer and put your hands together and kick a couple of steps, and when you're away from the house of God, you don't give him no praise. Neither will you obey his voice. You are a hypocrite. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. So you got to get it right. Amen. And that's what the word is for. Yes. To get you right. Amen. And you'll never be right when you fight against what's written in its pages. So you can never use other people as your excuse. <laughs> Because if it's right, it's right. If it's written, it's right. If God said it, it's right. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Praise God. God never told you to listen to other people when they're yet speaking contrary to what's written. That's why he said, believe not every spirit. But try the spirit, whether it be of God, for many false prophets have gone out to the world. Do you not know when we preach the truth and people don't receive it? In other words, they don't believe you. So to, to, to them, you are a false prophet because they don't believe what you say. They believe what they believe is right. And if they are believing things that are contrary to what the man of God is teaching from scripture, to them, you are a false prophet. Oh, yes. They'll never tell you that, though. No. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some of the greatest men that have walked in holiness and carried the truth of God's word were called false apostles, false prophets, cult leaders. Even the Pharisees said Jesus had a devil. They, they showed in. They said he cast out devils by Beelzebub. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because his doctrine did not align with their doctrine. So they looked at him as a false Christ, a false apostle, and a false teacher. And that's why they begin to secretly commune with one another how we might have him arrested and put to death. Glory to God. Grab your Bibles. We're coming out of the book of James, the apostle, chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James, the apostle, chapter 4. And I'm going to read one verse of scripture unto you. Yeah. I'm not going to deal with the whole context in the whole chapter of James chapter 4, but I want to bring out this one verse. Praise God. In verse 17, the scripture says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Amen. 
Let me bring that out one more time. In James chapter 4 and verse 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Praise God. Father, we thank you in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. We adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you above the flesh. We exalt you above any and everybody. And we want to bless you. And thank you for the word that's going to be presented on today. May your presence continue to be in the midst of this house. May you open up the eyes of the blind and bring conviction in their heart and cause them to come into the knowledge of the truth, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Again, we're coming out of James chapter 4 and verse 17. Now, I want everybody to understand that James was one of the original apostles Amen. that Jesus chose when he got out of prayer from communing with his father. Amen. You know the story how Jesus went into a hey. mountain to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And when he came out of prayer, the scripture says he chose 12 apostles, right. which were also called his disciples. Right. And one of them was James. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. And he teaches us in his epistle in chapter 4. In verse 17. Now I want everybody to understand that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Praise God. So James is inspired by the Holy Ghost yeah. to give us this truth yeah. that is written in the text. Yeah. He says, for him that knoweth to do good mm -hmm. and doeth it not to him, it is a sin. Yeah. Because we all know that when you know better, you should do better. Come on, somebody. When you know better, you should do better. Now, we know there are times when people don't know no better. Amen. And this is why God will put somebody in your life to teach you what the will of the Lord is. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why he does that. He will put people in your life to show you what the will of the Lord is. Amen. That will show you God's ways of righteousness. Amen. And when you come into the knowledge of the truth, there is no more an excuse for you. There is absolutely no excuse Amen. because I'm inquired to believe that to much given yes. is much required. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's why it's dangerous to come into the knowledge of the truth and then reject it. Because when you know better, you should do better. Listen to this in 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 20, 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse number 20, and the text reads, 
For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Amen. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness then after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them Amen. but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire Amen. Amen. praise God Amen. are you listening to me now please understand that when you know better, you should do better. Amen. And this is why God would send his man into your life. Yeah. Because sometimes we think we know so much. Right. <laughs> right. Praise God. Right. Now when I say that God will send his man in your life, that's not talking about any preacher. Mm -hmm. That's not talking about any preacher. Because we have a slew of preachers out here today. We have preachers on every corner. They everywhere. Some of them sound pretty good, can deliver somewhat some good messages. Right. But there's a lot of things they ain't ever telling you. But they gonna make sure they collect that money. Come on somebody. They gonna make sure they collect that money. And even after they collected all that money, you are still left ignorant of what is the will of the Lord. Praise God. Are you listening to me? And we have become so satisfied with just sitting in a church and regardless if we being taught the truth or not, we won't even get our hat and our coat and leave out from that place. You want to know why? It's because we've been institutionalized. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you've been institutionalized, you are in mental prison. And it is difficult for you to try to escape. You may attempt to escape, but because you are mentally enslaved, you find yourself going back into that internment camp called the church. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? God is not going to send a man in your life and he's going to lead you in the bondage. He's not going to do that. God is not going to send a man in your life to lie to you. God is not going to send a man in your life and he's not going to tell you the truth on many things for fear or losing his members. Amen. Well, you got to understand that none of us belong to that preacher. Amen. Amen. We belong to God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which you have of God. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Now I'm talking to the beloved now. Because if you ain't saved, you don't belong to God. Are you listening to me? But I want the saints of God to understand you belong to him. You've been washed in his blood. You've been baptized by his spirit. You now wear his name, praise God. And you represent his kingdom. Hallelujah. But God is never going to send a man to you to lie. He's never going to do that. He's never going to send a man that's going to lead you into bondage. 
whether that's financial bondage, physical bondage, psychological bondage, or spiritual bondage. He is never going to send a man to lead you in the bondage. Remember when God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel, he led them out of Egypt, the house of bondage. Amen. When Jesus came on the scene, did he not come to set the captives free? Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Now, we must understand the importance of having a man of God in your life. Yeah. I've heard people say, well, we don't need a preacher. God tells me everything I need to know. Well, that is not the truth. There are some things that God can show you, but there's a lot of things he's not going to show you. You want to know why? You will never see your need to submit to the fivefold ministry. And how many know Jesus established the fivefold ministry? He said, I gave you apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And he's not talking about any man that's calling himself an apostle. He's not talking about any man that's calling himself a prophet. He's not talking about any man who's calling himself an evangelist, pastor, or teacher. He's talking about men that he has ordained. And he sent them with that one truth. One truth. Why do we have so many preachers that believe different? All right. The songwriter said, Don't you want to go to that land? 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 Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound? Oh, yeah. Watch this. That land we all referring to is that holy city, that new Jerusalem. And there's only one way to get there. Jesus said, I am the way. There's only one God, one Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, there's only one truth. And that same Jesus ain't dropping different truths in different preachers' mouth and got us going different ways. That's not the Holy Ghost. The scripture says, I beseech you that there be no divisions among you. Well, false, well, false doctrine will divide us one from another because it will have you believe in something on the contrary. And when you both are believing something on the contrary, you can't walk together. How can two walk together except they agree? And if we're going to walk with God, we got to get in perfect agreement with that which is written in his word. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We got people that got different views on water baptism. When the apostles showed us what Jesus meant. Jesus said, go into all the world, baptize it in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Huh? Did you know your archbishop wasn't there and your reverend wasn't there and your jurisdictional bishop wasn't there but there were some men that were called by God who walked with him for three and a half years that was there when he made that statement. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then when Jesus had ascended back up in the glory, mm -hmm. we find Peter the apostle yes. standing up with the 11 after the Holy Ghost fell the Holy in the upper room. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Acts chapter 2. The scripture said Peter stood up with the 11 and he began to preach. Why did the apostle Peter begin to preach and not the other apostles that were with him? Because he had the keys. Jesus told Peter, because you've received the revelation that I am the Christ the son of the living God. He said, behold, I give thee the keys to the kingdom of God. And that's why we find the apostle Peter opening up the doors of salvation first to the Hebrews in Acts chapter 2 and also to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. He began to preach the doors open. He said, now if you're going to get in, amen, into the kingdom of God, you must repent and be baptized. Now that same Peter was there when Jesus said, go into all the world, baptizing in the name. Notice he didn't say the titles. He said the name singular of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And on the day of Pentecost, when the people came to him and asked him, what must we do? He said, repent and be baptized every one of you. He didn't say some of you. He said all of you. I don't care if your archbishop don't believe it. I don't care if your rev don't believe it. I don't care if your jurisdictional bishop don't believe it. You better get with these apostles that walk with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Come on, somebody. Who, I heard somebody say, who is Peter to say something that Jesus didn't say? Well, see, that's somebody who don't have understanding. That's somebody who needs to humble themselves and sit under a true man of God so he can give you knowledge and understanding. Ain't that what he said in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15? He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart. He ain't talking about any kind of pastor. And that pastor ain't teaching you many things. But he makes sure he gets your money every week. Come on, somebody. Praise God. He said every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Who is Peter to preach that? Well, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, the scripture says Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, gave commandments to his apostles. Come on, somebody. So when you say Acts 2.38 is wrong, you're saying God is wrong. Because Acts 2.38 is the fulfillment yes, of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 when he was speaking in reference of baptism by water. By water. Now, please understand, it's not just the water. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost because that's the part that puts you in the body. Okay. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13, by one spirit are we baptized into the body of Christ. Whether we be Jew or Gentile, bond or free, we have all been made to drink into that one spirit. Praise God. So there is a repentance, a death, a water baptism, a burial, and an infilling with the Holy Ghost, a resurrection that every person must receive. Now when you know better, you should do better. No excuses. When you know better, you should do better. You can't use him or her as an excuse. Well, I don't do this because they do that, but it has nothing to do with you. You're going to be judged by the things that you have done in this body, whether it be good or bad. And look at this grand opportunity 
God has given us. Yes, to escape his wrath that is to come. And it's difficult for people to escape from what they've been under because they've been institutionalized. You ever see somebody get out of, that's been in jail for a long time, and then when the when it, the time comes for them to be released, they seem to can't adapt to society, yeah. so they go out committing crimes on purpose so they can get caught, so they can go back to jail. Right. Right. Praise God. Right. You ever see a, a prostitute be mistreated by her pimp? Praise God. He can beat her, take all of her money, and so forth and so forth. He can leave her for dead in the middle of the street. Praise God. But for some reason, she always finds herself going back to him. You know why? They've been institutionalized. That's a mental prison. Hello, somebody. Praise God. It's the same way with churches. You can, you can grow up a Catholic or a Mormon and that's all you've ever known then when God presents the truth when people find it difficult to receive it yet they can see certain things are wrong and blasphemous they seem to find themselves going right back under that religious dictatorship come on somebody you can go to churches where the pastor's a Freemason. He's in a cult. Hallelujah. A cult that worships devils. Y'all not talking to me. You can go to a church and the pastor cuss. Cuss every week. Cuss every month. Cuss here and cuss there. Cuss everywhere. And these folks can't see that you are up under the wrong leadership. I don't care how long you've been there. You need to save yourself from this untoward generation. Because as long as you stay up under that, you know what's happening? You are consenting to his behavior. You are in agreement with his behavior. You're saying nothing's wrong with it. We all got something. Well, whatever that something is, you better repent and get delivered from it. Let you bust hell wide open. Come on, somebody. Because ain't nobody going to heaven and we all got something. We must come. We must be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. We must be overcoming saints if we go wear a crown. Come on, somebody. The apostle said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I kept the faith. And many have no idea what that means. Because if you're not living up to God's word, you're not keeping the faith. You have fallen away from the truth. Now you in the flesh and doing that which is wrong in the sight of God. Are you listening to me? Come on somebody. Praise God. Can I preach in this house? Can I blow the trumpet? Can I sound the alarm? When you know better, you should do better. And that word know is the short form for knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge is know how. Oh, yeah. know how. Knowledge is also awareness of the facts. That's what knowledge is. Amen. When you know better, you should do better. Amen. And how many understand there is a better way? Yeah, and the word of God shows us the better way. You know, the word better means a more excellent way. A higher standard. <laughs> Praise God. When we know better, we should do better. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 
But it's shameful when God has presented his truth and many have taken it and cast it behind them. Isn't that what it says in Psalms chapter 50 and verse 17? Seeing thou hatest instructions and cast my words behind thee. Have you ever had someone share the truth of God and because you didn't receive it, you took it and cast it behind you and let it fall to the ground as if it was a piece of garbage. That's how we treat the word of God today, like it's garbage. We treat it as it never proceeded out of the mouth of God. It was something that that preacher made up. Yet we have documented proof. We have a credible witness. We can take you to what is written and rightly divide it. Come on, somebody. When you know better, you should do better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen to the prophet of God in Hosea. Chapter 4. And verse 6. Hosea the prophet. Chapter 4. And verse 6. And the text says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God and I will also forget thy children praise God so when a people is lacking knowledge as pertain to this portion of scripture, notice when you read the text, it wasn't that they wasn't hearing it. Because it says, because thou hast rejected knowledge. So they were hearing it. But they were rejecting it. And when you hear the truth of God as pertain to scripture and you reject it, then you put yourself in the category of the ignorant. And the apostle said, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. But you will never be able to say you didn't know. Because when you reject the truth of God, it's going to be a witness against you on the day of judgment. Because the same word you reject Hallelujah. is the same word that's going to judge you. Hallelujah. And I know people think, oh, you can't go to hell for this. You can't go to hell for that. You know how many people I've heard tell me that? Oh, you can't go to hell for this. You can't go to hell for that. They have no scripture for what they say. They just babbling, vain jangling. They have no scripture for what they say. Because they're operating out of emotion. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to operate by truth yes. and by the love of God, not by your emotions. Your emotions will mislead you. Well, you know, I don't feel that we have to do all of that. Well, see, that is a subjective truth to you but you're wrong. But the objective truth that's based on facts and scripture says otherwise. Come on. Are you hearing this? You may not like what I'm preaching, but let me give you a news flash. Many things I preach people don't really like. You know why? Because they do not have a stomach for the truth. Amen. 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 And I want you to know it was like that Whoa. in the Hallelujah. old world. It was like that under the first covenant. Mm -hmm. It was like that under the new covenant. The prophets, the apostles, and Jesus Christ, they were all murdered because they spoke the truth of God that came directly from his throne. Amen. And we live in a day now, we want to hear a preacher that's going to 
tickle our ears, that's going to tell me what I believe, that's going to keep me in a comfort zone, that's going to make that's, that's going to make me feel good because he, he's telling me things that I believe. Well, I come to shake you. I come to rock your world. I come to rock the boat. I come to tip it over too, praise God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Praise God. And that's why fellowships like ours are small. Yeah. Come on, our ministry here in Kansas City is small. My church in Wichita, Kansas is small. Praise God. But does that make us wrong? Because we're small. The scripture says, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many go in there at But straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leadeth to life and few there be that find it. You know, there was only eight souls saved in the old world. Just a few. Just a few. Wasn't a whole lot. Now, I believe there will be millions upon millions of people saved, but compared to them that's going to die and go to hellfire, it doesn't even compare. Because the millions upon millions of people that make heaven is just a few compared to the many that go into eternal destruction. How many understand if you're going to do better? It's important that you have knowledge and understanding. I teach people this all the time. Just because you say praise God, amen, just because you clap your hands when the man of God is preaching, that is not proof you receive the, the word of God. Because when we give the benediction, the question is, what you going to do with what you heard? See, God's word don't change. See, many think God's word changed from church to church. They can go to this church and live a totally different. Come over to this church and live this way. Go to another church and live it. Based on what the preacher believes, they adapt to that. I heard a preacher tell this sister that was a joiner, that was part of my church at one time, well, if that preacher preaches this, you submit to what he preaches. So in other words, if I didn't preach that, you don't have to do it, even though you may have come into the knowledge of the truth. And I had to give that sister some knowledge, some wisdom. I said, let me tell you something. The truth is the truth. It don't change from church to church. I know you can go to this church, and it's different from that church. Come on, somebody. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. You go from denomination to denomination. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the Bible changes from, from whatever church you go to. Mm -hmm. It changes. Well, we don't do all of that. Well, well we don't believe all of that. Well, 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 God didn't say. They got no scripture. They just saying God didn't say. Come on, somebody. They, they don't know anything. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And that's why so many people have so many different belief systems. That's why there's so many arguments, bickering and backering, back and forth. All because you believe something different. But you ain't never going to the scriptures. See, the Holy Ghost leads us into one truth. The Gospel of John chapter 16 and verse 13 Jesus said, when the spirit of truth come, he will guide us into all truth. And there's only one truth. Jesus is the truth. And he only speaks one truth. He dropped one truth in the mouth of his apostles. And that's why it says in Acts 2.42, and they, the New Testament church, continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, which was the teachings of Christ. And what did Jesus say? My doctrine is not mine, 
It's my fathers that sent me. So anytime you are fighting the truth, you're fighting against God. Even Gamil understood that. He was a member of the Sanhedrin Council. Praise God. He was, amen. And he said concerning these apostles who had been arrested and beaten. He said, if these men be of God, you can't overthrow it. He said, but if they're not of God, what they're doing is going to come to naught. He said, but if what they're doing is of God, you can't overthrow it unless you find yourself trying to fight against God. Amen. We have a lot of people fighting God because they trying to be right. See, when you know better, you do better. And God's word is able to make us wise unto salvation. Yeah. It gives us everything we need. He teaches us everything we need to know. And that's why it's important that you sit at the feet of Jesus and let the man of God teach you. See, a true man of God will never mislead you. Never. He'll never mislead you. But you have to always be skeptical when you go certain places. Huh? Amen. <laughs> you have to be skeptical when you go certain places. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. But this is what the text is teaching us. Praise God. Now I know we live in a time where people think their way is right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what Solomon, the son of David, recorded? Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. He said, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of his ways are the ways of death. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 15 says, they have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Basar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb man speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet, and I didn't cuss. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Does that make sense? Solomon, the son of David, also records in Proverbs how they have forsaken the ways of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. Right. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, when you know better, you got to do better. Hallelujah. You got to be open because sometimes we become so closed-minded that when we hear anything contrary to what we've been taught, we count the truth of God as a lie. You don't believe that? Let me share with you what the scripture says. Praise God. I'm going to say that again. When we hear something contrary than what we used to hear it. The truth that we've heard, we count that as a lie. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm reminded of what the text says over here in Jude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
in verse number 10 it says but these speak evil of those things which they know not I believe the apostle Peter says how they speak evil of things they understand not because they don't understand it they count it as false because it's something they have not used to hearing and when they hear something contrary to what they've always known the truth that they heard they take it in I don't believe that And that's why a lot of people ain't going to make it. Because nobody's going to be saved without the word. God is only speaking one truth. One God, one truth. And you can know the truth. Did Jesus say that? In the gospel of John chapter 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. Amen. Now, if you of God, you're going to receive his words. Right. Now, what Jesus said in the gospel of John chapter 8, when he was dealing with them unbelieving Jews. Amen. Amen. Listen to what he says to them. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm about to close it out here in a second. The gospel of John chapter 8. Uh -huh. Beginning at verse... 44. Again, Jesus is dealing with these unbelieving Jews. They always was contending with him. Amen. Amen. Jesus was the truth. Are you listening to me? Amen. Jesus was the truth and is the truth. But the Pharisees came, praise God, and you saw what happened, right? Amen. 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 Praise God. You saw what happened. Amen. They begin to contend with Jesus, who is the truth. You know, just like these church folk, they're always fussing and fighting and arguing and, and talking about you because, you know, you believe all this crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Well, Jesus dealt with that. Amen. Amen. Listen what Jesus says to these unbelieving Jews. He said, you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Come on, somebody. What did Jesus say in the gospel of John chapter 10? My sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me and will not follow the voice of strangers. We dealing with a people today that do not know the voice of God. That's why they reject truth. They'll they'll gobble up a lie in a in a minute. They'll gobble it up, but the truth of God they'll spit it out and trample it under their foot. Come on. And there comes a time, my brothers and sisters, Jesus said, don't keep giving that which is holy to the dogs. Come on, somebody. He said, don't keep giving that which is holy unto the dogs. And don't cast your pearls before swine because all they're going to do with this truth is trample it under their feet. And yet, Jesus is giving us a grand opportunity to come into the knowledge of the truth. And one thing I found out, Mother D, 
The truth can be very uncomfortable. Yeah. But many don't want, they, they want to be comfortable. Well, God calls you out of your comfort zone. That's why he's called Abraham out of the earth of the Chaldee. He said, get thee out of thy country and from thy father's house and thy country. And I want you to go to a place. He was calling him out of his comfort zone. And Abraham went, not even knowing where he was going. But you know why he went? The scripture says he believed God. But we have a debt, we have a problem believing God. We want to believe what we want to believe. And you can believe whatever you want to believe. But it's not gonna save you. Somebody say, I'm saved. Well, if you're going when you get saved. It's because you heard the truth about Christ. And if you're going to stay saved, there's more truth that you have to hear and continuous to hear if it's going to keep you on that narrow road that leads to eternal life. You can't believe how you want to believe. Why do you think these folks, why do you think we got so many different Christians? Today, even sinners were saying, are you a Christian? And if you say yes, then they'll say, what kind? <laughs> Why, why is the unbeliever saying to, to, to us in the church, what kind of Christian are you? I thought there was only one way to follow Jesus. Even the world is confused because the church has confused them. There's a civil war in the church. Just like there was a civil war in Israel. That's why two of the tribes broke off from the other ten. And then you start hearing passages of scripture that says Israel and Judah. Because there was a civil war. And what do we see in the house of God today? A civil war. And most people are bickering and backering over doctrine. When there's only one. The Holy Ghost ain't going to confuse you. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 33, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Did you hear that? As in all the churches of the saints. One church, but in different locations. And they had true men of God preaching the same thing. And if somebody got off course, them apostles would come through and reprove them. That's why every now and then they, they say, let us go and see how they do. They had to hold them in compliance to make sure they was keeping in line with the doctrine that Christ had given them that they had taught them before they ordained them elders in every city. They had to make sure they was in compliance. Yeah. You know, like in the corporate world, every now and then we'll have an audit. audit. And they'll have compliance officers yes, come into the department. Uh -huh. And this is why we have to save, you know, files for like six months to a year. Uh -huh. And they have those compliance officers come through and do an audit. Why do they do that? To make sure we're staying in compliance with the law. All right. Because if we get sued, we can be out uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. But that's why the true men of God has to hold people in compliance. They say like the apostles and the bishops. They have to hold people in compliance. Amen. They have elders up under them. They have churches up under them. And they have to visit those places of worship to make sure they are in compliance. Come on, somebody. See, when you know better, you do better. Now, there is a slew of things I can bring out. But for the sake of time, I will not do it today. Hello, somebody. Are you listening to me? 
Glory to God. When you know better, you do better. Now again, in 2 Peter chapter 2, he says, how many knew the ways of righteousness. They knew it because they were taught. See, the church in the first century, they were all taught by men of God who walk with Jesus. Yes, right. They all taught the same thing. Hey, but now we get all these crazy heads. Crazy. How can you how can how can a preacher say things contrary to what the apostles taught the New Testament church? Right. And Jesus personally taught and trained these apostles. Yes. And sent them mm -hmm. to teach his church. But today, we all over the place. Well, you know, we don't do that over here when they did that in the Bible. Well, over here, you know, we got this and we got that. Well, the Bible condemns that. And many don't care if. God said it, or if he didn't say it, they're going to do it the way they want to. Even after you have been sent to tell them the right way of the Lord. They're going to still do it the way they want to and make some excuse about it. Hmm? Let me tell you something. You only got so many chances to keep rejecting God. You can think, oh, that's nothing. That ain't no big issue. Where, where is that in the scripture? Right. That ain't no big issue. Right. See, I told you, we, we spend most of our time operating out of emotions. Yeah. You only got so many times to yeah. keep rejecting God. Amen. You saw what happened in the days of the prophet. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Yeah. They was rejecting the word of God. They was resisting the Holy Ghost. Isn't that what Solomon, the son of David, said? In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13, Whoso despiseth the word, him will God destroy. Amen. And you can say, oh, this is nothing. That's, that ain't nothing. Oh, y'all nitpicking, praise God. Well, let me tell you something. If nitpicking is wrong, <laughs> Because in the scriptures, God showed Noah exactly how to build that ark. Told him the length, told him the width, told him what kind of wood to use. Go for wood. Now notice, Noah didn't go get some pine wood. He went and got gopher wood. Why? Because God said it. Gopher was the only wood that can withstand the flood. Amen. And he did it exactly the way God told him. And that's why when they entered into the ark, they withstood the flood for 40 days and 40 nights. And when the waters dissipated, God opened up the door. And they entered into the new world. Because the old world had been destroyed. If nitpicking is wrong, what about the vision that God gave Moses how to build the tabernacle? He told him exactly how to build it. He told him what to use. He told him how tall it was to be, what fabric we used to use. He showed him everything detailed how to do it. So you're talking about nitpicking. We're talking about detail. Yeah. Ain't that something? When you go get your car detailed and clean, if they miss something, sir, you miss this spot over here. Why you nitpicking? Well, I paid for that. Now, now you see how hypocritical we are? We so hypocritical today. But when it come to your car, now you nitpicking because they missed a little spot. Sir, could you get this spot over here? 
And then when he, you know, sigh. <sighs> <laughs> and you said, I don't know what he's getting mad for. I paid my money. You, you see how we are? We're so, hip, we're so hypocritical, it's ridiculous. Pippa. I must be hitting something in here. Come on, somebody. Yes, God is a nick picker. Because when he told Nadab and Abihu, Praise God. When you go into the holies of ho when you go into the holy place to light the menorah, you're to take the fire from the brazen altar. Because the brazen altar, that fire came from heaven. But the priest was commanded not to drink strong drink. You know why? It would cloud their judgment. It would blur their vision. And when they disobeyed God's commandments, they find themselves wandering over to one of the campsites. And they saw a fire. And they took fire in their censer. And they began to carry it over to the tabernacle. Praise God. And they begin to offer strange fire. Praise God. Can you can you can you hear? Nadab and Abihu, well, God is not a nick picker. Your yeah. fire is fire. It doesn't matter. God is not like that. God doesn't really mean what he said. Y'all taking it too far. See, many people are going to lose their soul for eternity because they didn't take heed to God's word. Well, God ain't going to throw nobody in hell for this. They ain't going to throw nobody in hell for that. I heard one of my wife's cousins say one time, we went to visit my mother-in-law, and she was over there talking to my wife's uncle, and her sister was there, and they was talking about uh, being drunk. And her sister said, ain't nowhere in the Bible that says if you if you drink and get drunk, you going to hell. Oh. <laughs> well, God sent the right man over at the right time. I said it don't. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Need I say more? Come on, somebody. People say stuff all the time. Don't know what they're talking about. Because they're trying to change the scriptures to fit their life. They don't have to change, so they change the scripture. Romans 1 says how they change the truth into a lie and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Do you not know how dangerous it is to add or take away from what is written? If God said it, he said it. And he ain't changing. And if your pastor change it, or your archbishop change it, you better get your hat and your coat and your five dollars you put in the offering and run out of there. Because if the blind lead the blind, you both gonna fall in the ditch. Amen? Amen. You both gonna fall in the ditch. Because if you following him, huh? Amen. Then he's gonna lead you somewhere. Right. That you cannot afford to stay. Right. Hmm? Yeah. When you following a preacher that ain't telling you the truth. Yeah, they may preach some truth. Yes. Every preacher, even false prophets and false teachers preach some truth. That's how they get you. But they're not telling you the whole counsel of God. But you better believe they're going to get your money every week. Oh, a whole year didn't pass and he still ain't taught you about this and this and this. But he got your money and you done been there three years, five years, and he still ain't taught you about this, this, wow. and this. You're not even walking in truth. Wow. You're just being dazzled with a good message. 
They may have some truth in it. Yeah. But there's a lot of things you're not being taught. What did Jesus say to the Pharisees? He said, you have omitted the weightier matters of the law, but you have left the other things undone. The apostle said in Acts chapter 20, I have not shunned to declare all the counsel of God unto you. Amen. Come on, somebody. When you know better, you got to do better. See, this is not about convenience. And it's not about your comfort. Because God come to shake you. See, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Amen. Right. Yep. Amen. Amen. And that's why he will send a man of God in your life that will do this very thing. You know what the prophet Jeremiah brings out? Chapter 1 and verse 10. He says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down. Now when we have successfully done that, now we can build and plant. God is not going to build and plant around a bunch of mess you've been taught. He got to rip that stuff out of you. He got to filter that stuff out of your mind so he can start fresh. And, he, and when he starts fresh, he's going to lay a firm foundation and then begin to build their own. And no one can build without the truth of God being ministered in your life. I don't care what people say. I don't care what a denomination say. I don't care about these churches that call themselves holiness and ain't real holiness. Right. Holiness has become a name that people like to say they are, but they can't live it. Exactly. I hear people say all the time, we holiness. Well, the Sabbath holy, you do that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's under the law. No, it wasn't under the law. The Sabbath was established at creation. Amen. It was established at creation. Amen. Huh? Amen. And God what? Blessed it. Amen. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 says what God has blessed you cannot reverse it. Right. He blessed it and he hallowed it. Amen. What does that word hallow mean? Sanctify. Amen. That's what hallowed me. He sanctified it. You, so you got to do more than talk in tongues. Amen. I believe every every child of God should speak in tongues. Amen. If you have the Holy Ghost, you should pray in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Let me make sure I put that in there. The folk can jabber a lot of stuff, but it ain't God. You can't speak in tongues and then cuss. You can't speak in tongues and then lie. Lying to the people. But you, but you speaking in tongues. Got the women up preaching. Come on, somebody. When the apostle said, I suffer not a woman to teach. She's not to exercise authority over the man, but she's to learn in silent with all subjection. The same apostle said, let the aged women teach the young women. See, God never contradicts himself. People contradict God's word. And the reason why people believe a, a lot of the ways that they do is because they've been validated to believe the lie from that preacher they sitting up under. Right. You'll say, daughter, son. You know, the Lord said, and I believe God is calling you to do this. Oh. Well, let's go to the scripture. Let's see if God really called that woman to do this. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Let's let's go to the scripture. Let's see if God has called a man to be a Christian comedian or, or have a pantomime ministry. Come on, somebody. 
Are you listening to me? See, we just believe anything. But I just happen to believe what God has spoken out of his mouth. Even it says in Jeremiah chapter 23, the prophets prophesy a vision out of their hearts and not from the mouth of the Lord. Right. See, it must be spoken out of God's mouth. Amen. Because faith comes by hearing, yeah. hearing right. by the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in our foundational text, before I close it out, he said, for him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is a sin. Somebody said, well, what if I don't believe what you said? It doesn't matter. You had a chance to hear it. So whether you accept it or reject it, if it's the truth of God, you're going to be held accountable. Yes. Too much given is much required. For him that knew it to do the will of God and did it not, he shall be beaten with many stripes. That means a greater torment in hellfire. Because there are people who did not know the will of God, but yet they were worthy of stripes because they were not born again. He said they shall be beaten with few stripes. They're still going to suffer eternal judgment, but they will receive a lesser degree of torment than them who knew the truth and rejected it. That's why it says it's been better for you not to have known the ways of righteousness than to turn from. Isn't that what he said to Judas? He said, the one you see dipping his hand in the dish it been better that he never been born because you have to remember Judas walked with Jesus for three years and he heard the truth he, ab he abided in it for a time but then he fell away from it he fell away See, if you're going to be saved, you got to hear the truth, receive it, and continue in the truth. See, that's what, that's what happened to old Lucifer, who became Satan. John chapter 8, verse 44. Jesus said, Satan was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth. But was he in the truth at one time? Amen. Absolutely. But he fell away from it because of his own pride. Uh -huh. Lifted up in his beauty. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 28 brings that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to continue in the word of God. Don't get comfortable believing anything. Any and everything you believe as a born again Christian must have its roots in scripture. Amen. Or it's wrong. Amen. For him that know to do good, how am I going to know what's good? God is going to send his man to teach you. Ain't that what the Ethiopian eunuch said? Philip the evangelist asked him a question, do you understand what thou readest? He said, the Ethiopian eunuch replied and said, how can I except some man guide me? And Philip the evangelist, who was led by the Holy Ghost, began to open up the scriptures and show him that the passage of scripture that he was reading was talking about Jesus. Because he said, is this talking about a prophet? That's what the Ethiopian eunuch said. Is this portion of scripture that I'm reading, is it talking about a prophet or some other man? See, he sent the man of God to him to bless his life. And that man went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. and I have no doubt 
that when he came up out that water, he was speaking in tongues. Because First John says, uh, whoso confesseth that Jesus is the Christ, uh, God dwelleth in him. Uh, he received the Holy Ghost. Uh, he began to speak in tongues. Uh, he began to shout uh, the blessings of God. Hello, somebody. Uh, hallelujah. God's word is consistent. It's, it'll never make you waver. See, that's, that's the problem today. He said, be not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Yes. Romans 16. He said, by good words, and fair speeches. See, they sound so good when they preach. It'll make you. Woo! It can be lies. He ain't even telling you the whole truth. He put he mixed a little sugar, little sugar in there for you. Sweetened it up and made you taste it. Come on, somebody. And you just ate it all up. But it was some poison and some cyanide. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 For him that know it to do good. And when God send the man to tell you the truth, you now have knowledge. That's right. You have you know what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, Well, I don't believe that. It doesn't matter. Right. Amen. Romans chapter 2 said, What if some don't believe? Does that make the faith of God of none effect? If you don't receive it, that is your problem. You had the opportunity. Amen. And you're going to blow it. All because I'm institutionalized. Did God come to set the captives free? He come to deliver you. But because people don't want to be delivered, they want to stay in their comfort zone, their lives never change. All they do is live day to day mm -hmm. and become poorer and poorer because they're giving all their money to their preacher. Right. Huh? Amen. Amen. Just giving them all their money. And as long as you're giving them all your money, he happy. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. They come up with every gimmick to get more money, more money, more money. More money. It's all about the money, the money, the money, mm -hmm. the money. What about the souls? Right. What about people getting saved? Right. Without, without, what about, what about people being enhanced right. and strengthened? Right. What about that? Amen. What about people coming to the knowledge of the truth? It may be uncomfortable for them, but let them get on. Let them be uncomfortable. Amen. Yeah. Huh? Amen. You should be on the edge of your seat. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's just how it is. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come on and give God a praise. Amen. 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 When you know better, you should do better. Amen. And that's just how it is. Hallelujah. There's no if and buts about it. When you know better, you should do better. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, yeah. to him it is a sin. Amen. Yeah. Because you have received knowledge. And if you reject the knowledge to get in the flesh, then you have sinned against God. Amen. That's why we got to die daily to this flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Does this make sense? Amen. How many going to do better? Yeah. I want you to really take heed to what you're hearing now. Because you're going to be challenged. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through the fire. Yes. You're going to go through. Because your faith is going to be tried. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to put you back in the hands of Bishop Williams. 
Come on and bless God as he come. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, you can't change it. Yeah. You can't change it. Mm -hmm. You can't change it. It's the word of God. Yeah. You can't change it. Nobody can change it. You can't change it. y'all say well what did the word of God say amen amen Amen. when God revealed truth we have to walk in it I might not understand it Lord help my understanding but if I'm correct the Bible teaches me that if I obey God will give me the understanding if I would obey God would open my understanding so we thank God for the word of God every word of God is right and you can't change it we can sing another song. What will your answer be? What will your answer be? When you stand before the Lord to give an account for the word you heard, what will your answer be? Hallelujah. What you going to tell him? You're like, what, what, what you going to tell God? Lord, I didn't hear you heard it. Yeah. Amen. 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 I tell people all the time, you're going to give an account for what you heard. Don't ever have to believe it. No, sit still. Go ahead, amen. But you're going to give an account to God for what you heard. Amen. That's why I love that song. What will your answer be? What will your answer be? When you stand before the Lord to give an account for the word you heard, oh, what will your answer be? You ain't going to be able to lie to God. And you come tell me anything. You come tell me anything. They're like Bishop was saying in his preaching. They grinning and skinning, clapping their hands. And all the time in their heart, they're saying, sit down. They said, shut up. I don't believe that. Amen. Going through all of the motions. Amen. But down in that heart, I ain't going to do that. Hallelujah to God. But what will your answer be? We're going to stand before me and give an account. Truly, we thank God this afternoon. Amen. We're they're, they're getting together. Amen. Praise the Lord. That which, amen, we can all partake in. Amen. So I want, if you, at this time, if you have an offering, amen, uh, Bishop, do you have cash out? Do you have cash out? Do you have cash out? Okay, I need to do something. Okay. Amen. Let me pause. Let me stop this recording. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs>